Okay, time to wrap it up for September the 17th, 2014. Uh, we came in, we had a pretty good idea on uh, the E-mini, and again, the E-mini off of FOMC action is the easiest to trade because the idea is, is if they don't change the interest rate, the current interest rate, uh, that uh, this and keep the program the same, uh, it's going to trade higher because that money has to go somewhere. Came in this morning wanting to buy 85 to 87. We raised that to 90 plus or minus based on this morning's news. So buy one, moved up. Uh, we had a sell failure at 95 plus or minus. And the idea was that we had, that we had a long bias. We definitely wanted to be long, but we could expect some selling sometime during the day because of long liquidation in front of the FOMC uh, uh, announcement. And that's exactly what we got. Uh, unbelievable whipsaw. When we saw this, we said, well, nothing wrong with buying it. Um, the uh, market did get down into our 85, 87 area briefly. Uh, we could, you know, the, the market got what they wanted, so you wanted to trade from the long side, so we're set to make new contract highs the way this works. And we had really, really, these guys bought into this. Somewhere in here was their peak buying. Uh, they bought in to the heavy selling. Look at this feedback that you get from this chart right here. This, this is the big money. Um, they they know what they want to do, and so far the market has traded with the 50 lot traders. So a pretty good idea of what to expect today and how the market would would play this morning's news. Back to our assessment of this morning's news was absolutely correct. No change. Can the F1 screen higher low, higher high? Because we want we're buyers tomorrow. Can sell failure to take out the uh, Globex, the overnight session high, for sure. But uh, we're interested on the buy side. We're at 2001, so this 95, 97 area, 96, 98, the prime territory. would like to lean against that number right there. Uh, volume on the hopes that we could get you know, an advantageous fill, but we're going to take what we get. Looking at the F2 screen. And here's the whip and K period. And you know, once again, you just when when you get into this kind of trading, you just you don't know what news is going to do to it, and uh, these news algorithms and everything that goes with it. It's just it's hard to figure. But we had a P based before the news. Uh, we looked at the news headlines. Uh, I did say I didn't see anything had changed. Still a buyer. And uh, the market has traded up since then. That did not stop it from going down here, uh, going below 85. There's not a lot of liquidity uh, when this news hits. Uh, the big guys stay on the sidelines for precisely the reason we did. Uh, you get your head handed to you and have the market instantaneously back to where it was when you just before you got your head handed to you. So. Um, Looking at what we have right now, this 2005, 2000 is resistance. So uh, the trade off this is going to be sell failure to extend um, today's day session range in the uh, Globex market. So we're going to sell failure, take out three to five. And uh, then the second sell zone will be sell failure to take out seven to ten. On the buy side, uh, 95, 96. Uh, last rotate down was 97, so we'll make it 96, 98. Buy one, and then buy two will be our 90 to 92. But since March of 2009, uh, if you've accepted the idea that easy money from the Fed will take the stock market higher, uh, you've done quite well. If you've been a fundamentalist uh, and you're forced to by your investment policy and your guidelines to be long, you've done well. 
if you're a trader, you can't believe the news, and you faded every move all the way up, uh, you've gotten your head handed to you for six years, nigh on six years. So I always point out on Zero Hedge that it's a great site for getting the other side of the story. It's a great site for uh, seeing just exactly what the news is, the what ifs, ands, and fours, uh, but it would be a lousy site because it's negative to trade off of. If you took the uh, Zero Hedge viewpoint, on the market you trade, you'd probably be a loser because of negative cast of what they say most of the time. Okay, looking at the note, uh, we got a good rally back up to the 124.12 uh, area, 11.12. Uh, off the last update, said didn't see anything change, but we're right back down here to 24.04. My assessment was, you know, Fed policy is the same. Um, nothing's changed. It's okay to be long um, financials, and uh, that's given us a hell of a ride. Uh, we just touched the top of our number two buy zone, uh, so uh, it's held up. And right now we're dealing with an outside day, and an outside day usually means trading range. So not afraid to buy in the weakness, not afraid to sell failure uh, to take out the 8 to 12 area. Does the F2 screen ag agree with this? Is your whip sign K? I separated it out so we can show you something right here. Uh, this profile is leaning P. Favors the buy side. You can see volume. The last couple of days has moved up. And now we've got pretty good resistance in the uh, uh, 8 to 12 area. So uh, our trade is going to be self-failure to take out 8 to 12. I don't think the news is all that bad. But if we don't take out resistance, that's where we are in 15 to 19 for sell 2. On the buy side, 29 to 01, uh, it is pretty aggressive. If we get our setup in that area, I can't see that anything has changed in the news uh, and that things are all that different after the Fed has spoken. I think the status quo has been preserved and interest rates are going to stay lo low for a long period of time, so it means we can't get too much selling. To my way of thinking. But again, when you, if you're not prepared to take this kind of risk on major news announcement and FOMC and unemployment is about as major as you can get, uh, then you shouldn't trade. You should let the dust settle down and come back in and pick it up the next day. Okay, we didn't have near the swing in the 30-year as we did in the 10-year, um, but bear in mind these are full 30 seconds on the 30-year and they're half 30 seconds on the 10-year, so uh, the movement on the 10-year can actually come in. Uh, show a little bit more movement than you'd get in actual uh, dollars. Okay, uh, 09, uh, we're currently at 27, last rotate up stopped at 31, so the knob spread has come in quite a bit today. Sell failure to take out 36, 3604. And then the second sell will be 7 to 11. Um, we give it a little room, 17 to 21, because of the knob spread. But that, again, we might be forced to act at 25. Don't know. Not afraid to buy it, because I don't think anything has changed. But the easiest trade to see is going to be selling failure to take out that L period high right there because we're looking at a great big B. The knob spread is coming in, and this is possibly the start of a new distribution lower. Uh, the buy trade is a little gutsy.
Okay. Normally speaking, uh, the news is it came out um, with the current budget deficit uh, lower than forecast, with inflation under control, and with the Fed ending taking another fifteen billion, I believe, out of its uh, monthly purchase, it would be bearish for gold. Uh, again, we've got a hell of a whip, and here's your L period. Comes right out of the middle, then pointed lower. So um, I think it's easier to make the call short gold than it is some of the others. So 3335 is sell one, and then 38 to 40 will be sell two. On the buy side, we have this low down here, so we'll make 25, 27. That's where support is. Let them get stops beneath that level. And I think we're headed for our those numbers we've been talking about since last week, 12-17, So the news from the Fed was bearish for gold, in my opinion. Okay, definitely bearish for uh, the euro. And for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's just the express purpose of the European Central Bank to take this lower. And uh, the European Central Bank has been talking about increasing their debt to handle the situations that they have in Europe. Uh, their economies, um, economy appears to be slowing down. Uh, Germany could even be entering a recession. Uh, if the uh, July through September numbers come in bad. And the sanctions put on Russia are definitely even hurting Germany. But I would, uh, the interesting thing to me about this particular chart is, look, even with all this, this whipsaw in K, look how volume pulls the market back to it. And a lot of you are looking for reasons to, well, how do I know I'm going to get to this high volume number here? Or how do I know I'm going to get to the mode? And how can you say that volume is an attractor? Look at the end period low right here versus that volume number. Look at this L period high versus the mode putting all of that together. Uh, look at this high volume number, most recent in the market's memory, where the market finds support. So you've got to develop confidence in the structure. You've got to develop confidence in the idea and the levels if you're going to participate. Uh, your trades are yours. Uh, I was working with a fellow this morning. Um, who um, was bothered by the fact he didn't get short off of 18 in a bond. And uh, his um, reasoning was he didn't know if 12 would come out. On the other hand, the market had sold and gotten all the way down there. He wasn't afraid at all of getting long at 8 and 9. And the reason was the sell at 18 was my trade and my setup. And the buy at eight or nine was his setup. So he had done his work. Uh, he was very comfortable with his setup. Uh, he took that trade without blinking an eye, got a small loss out of it. But the point I'm trying to make is it's his trade. It's not mine. And to make these trades um, yours, you've got to go back and do the work, and you've got to be sure that you recognize them, and you have to. Uh, Recognize them real time. Okay, uh, 29 looks like pretty good resistance. So here we are at 88, 29, 29, say plus or minus 5. It's aggressive as hell. Would like to wait till London to get that done. And then 15 to 25, picking up this area right in here, will be sell 2. I think we're headed lower, so uh, let them go get stops below 75. 60 to 70 by 1 and 40 to 50 by 2, and that'll be new lows. Bound to get stops below 50. Uh, as you all well know, for the last six months, uh, every rally in the euro is an opportunity to sell. 
in my not so humble opinion. So this this market starts in London. Uh, you all will have a wonderful opportunity to uh, get short into early strength and see if you can extend the range lower. Great. That's how I'm going to spend my morning, Charles, doing that. Are you out of your mind? OK. Um, <laughs> I, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, like you say what the words that come out of babes' mouths. Um, when you listen to the uh, speeches given by Obama today and Kerry, and uh, John Kerry really distinguished himself as a uh, uh, very knowledgeable in military history, he said, victory uh, only comes after much discussion. I thought victory came when you broke the other side's will to fight, and you usually don't do that with your tongue. Uh, you usually do it by killing uh, enough of their people that they just don't want to mix it up with you. Uh, Obama comes down there and he was talking about all of the support we're getting from our allies. It's all, we're going to train people, we're going to fill your jets with gasoline, we're going to help uh, put together rucksacks for your troops. So we're going to do all this kind of stuff. We're going to provide humanitarian Nothing uh, as far as combat roles. Uh, where it was announced today, they're going to send people from the British ASAS and the Australian SAS to train Iraqi soldiers on uh, how to fight. I mean, it's a joke. And then Obama finishes it by saying, "I can promise you, there'll be no. We're not going to restart the war in Iraq. There will be no boots on the ground. So what in the hell are you left with? I mean, it's like telling uh, the Taliban we're going to be fully out of um, Afghanistan." by date certain, well, if I'm Taliban and I want to preserve my fighting forces, I just have to wait for that date certain and get after it. So this is not a serious attempt to uh, degrade ISIS's fighting ability. So I, I really can't see that we're going to get a good outcome. Uh, and it was kind of like we, we didn't want to be the last one to die getting out of Vietnam when I was in that. I mean, the, you know, the generals and the politicians were speaking about something else. The guys that were actually fighting the war, I don't want to be the last one to die. I don't want to be the last, you know, name on the list. And uh, that's how the guys on the ground think. Okay, we're at 94.12. We got a pretty clean break here so against 94.50. So we're at 12. We got volume here at... Um, it's like 20, so selling the 25 to 50 area, pretty aggressive. Could all be upset by one headline. I uh, don't really like the idea of going home short on the U.S. close. Can get short in London. Then back to our 75.95 for sell two. There's a B pattern, so we'll try for 50 to 75 for for our first buy, the 93, even 93.25 for buy two. Uh, 93 is a more solid number than 9350. You know, a lot of people, you really don't appreciate the military until you've gone in it into, um, in, a, in a wartime situation. And when you raise your hand, you don't know where you're going to end up or where you're going to get stuck or what you're going to have to do. You just you make up your mind, you raise your hand, you go see what happens. But the two, the medals that you don't want to get are prisoner of war and purple hearts. And you may find this hard to believe, but getting killed is kind of part of the agreement. You've come to peace with that in your mind. Of course, you don't think it's going to happen to you. But getting severely wounded or becoming a prisoner of war is something that you don't want to put up with. And most civvies don't appreciate that, that thinking, because um, they don't want anything bad to happen to them. But when you put your soldiers out there to risk their lives uh, and don't back them, that becomes a different matter. So enough said. I'll see you all bright and early, 6.45 a.m. Central. Hot here in Wichita, back uh, above 
What's 91 degrees right now? It's supposed to go to 95, so summer has returned. Y'all have a great evening. See you in the